Hi everyone, this video is meant to guide you through your final bits of your thesis. I'm going to shortly talk about your discussion section and briefly mention something about the conclusion. So let us start with the word discussion itself. What does it mean when you're having a discussion with someone else? Think about a moment when you're sitting in a bar together with a friend and you're having a discussion about a topic that is important to you, such as sustainability. You may want to convince your friend that it's important to act in a sustainable way, which means that you want to provide him or her with the arguments you think are important to consider when acting sustainable. Whereas your friend might be of another opinion and he or she might not find it that important to act sustainable. So in this moment, you're having a discussion. One provides arguments, the other provides arguments, and it's important here that you listen to each other and that you are able to move forward in the discussion by listening, by providing arguments, and by coming to an agreement. All right, so let's go back to what we actually did last week. Last week, we looked at the results section. So how is this actually different from your discussion section? Well, the results section, as I mentioned last week, is really a objective presentation of your results. You don't want to interpret here. You want to avoid speculations. You want to avoid already linking it to the literature. It's basically just presenting your empirical findings. So actually, it's just simply presenting what you have found. Then moving on to the discussion section, this is where you really list the major findings of your thesis. What is most important? What is crucial for your reader to know? And were there maybe some surprising results, some things that you didn't expect? Um, and how does this relate to the literature? Though, do your results align with the literature or are they maybe um, not in line? And do you see some contrast there? So you really want to interpret your findings and you want to explain why you think you found certain um, aspects in your results. And then again, this is also the moment you are uh, aware. You need to show being aware of the strengths and limitations of your thesis. How did you approach everything? If you were back at the start of your thesis, how would you do things differently? So the discussion section is not about objectively presenting your findings. Now, this is really where you show that you understand what your results mean, also in light of the previously found literature. So guiding you through the roadmap, the roadmap to a good discussion. I would say always start to repeat the aim of your thesis. I mean, the aim was mentioned in your context analysis, but that is quite some pages before that. So it's always nice for the reader that you repeat that aim. What was the goal of your thesis? What did you aim to do in this thesis? And start to explain your main findings. What were the most important things you found? Or maybe even the most important things you hoped to find, but you didn't. Then it's time to start moving on to the comparison part. Compare your results to the literature. How are they different? How are they similar? And what do you think are the reasons for finding similar or different results? So in the end, it's not about having the perfect outcome, but it's about showing awareness, that you show awareness about the findings of your thesis, about why things may have actually not be found. Um, is it then maybe because of some strengths and limitations? As I just mentioned, if you were back at the start of your thesis again, how would you approach things differently? And this is what we would like to find in this discussion. It is like talking to that friend. It's about making sure that you provide the arguments on how to move forward. And if you were back at a, at a couple of months ago, how would, have, how would you have done the things differently? And finally, um, already shortly mentioned some recommendations. So if you were things differently, how would you do so? What kind of different methodology would you have used? Um, what are recommendations for the company in the future? And this is also actually the, the stepping stone towards the next section, the conclusion, and then afterwards, the final advice and recommendations in a practical sense. 
All right, and the final part is this conclusion section. So how is this again different from those results and the discussion? Well, actually, this is really where you restate your findings in a final, concise way. So the conclusion is not about writing three, four, five pages. It's about the take home message. What do you want your readers to remember? What is most important to take along? And how do actually your results feed into um, the advice and recommendation section? So remember what Mr. Brocket told in his video about how you can use design thinking to create your um, final advice and recommendations. And this is where you really need to look at, okay, what were my major findings? And how are these major findings feeding into a practical advice? So make sure that there's alignment between your results, your discussion, and in the end, your advice and recommendations. And you can do so by bringing this all together in the conclusion section. All right, this was the short video on how to write your results, discussion, and conclusion section. Good luck with these final straws and hope to see you soon.